I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made up, this diminishes fear. Knowing what must be done does away with fear. Rosa Parks. Oh, snap. What's tea, girls? You've just tuned in to Broken Women Win podcast. Discovering purpose in Christ beyond our ramshackle past. I am none other than your hope dealer, Ashley Williams, coming to snatch you out of the trenches of despair. So sit back, grab a snack, get something to drink, because honey, we've got a lot to discuss. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Don't be mad at me. I love y'all. Don't be mad. I'm sorry. I've been gone for like a week and a half, but life just kind of happened to you, girl. We're not going to even talk about that on this podcast because this podcast today, honey, this episode is so litty. You heard me. I'm talking about it's so lit. I had to change the background music like no lie. Like it's so lit. Listen, y'all, I'm so excited about the interview that you're about to hear between me and my brother Tank, Mr. Dixon. Listen, it's always awesome when God places people um, strategically on your path that's walking in the same direction of righteousness and holiness that you're walking in as well. Um, Let me tell you something. Y'all are really, really, really in for a good treat. Like I cannot explain enough how dope this episode is and honestly I knew that it was going to be you know off the hizzle for shizzle because when I tell y'all my warfare has been through the roof I'm talking about the spirit of offense honey has tried to just wrap your girl up in a snuggie I don't want to be wrapped in a snuggie offense Because, you know, the Bible says that where there is envy and strife, that there is every evil work. And, you know, anytime you are walking in a direction to do what God has called you to do and it's positive, honey, and you start cutting stuff off that don't need to be connected to you no more, the enemy get mad, child. He be mad, honey. He be like big mad. You know what I'm saying? And so he start bringing all kind of, you know, crap out of the woodworks. And it's just, it's y'all it's just been a mess these last past few days but guess what i'm here baby yes i am she is here she is here and i persevered oh yes i did and guess what satan we still got this episode out so you guys enjoy and uh yeah i'll talk to y'all the next episode enjoy love y'all bye how long we been friends type we've been friends for maybe about i would say at least Two and a half? Yeah, about two, two and, and a half years. years. So listen, so I have a really good friend of mine today, and we're going to be talking about um, breaking free from toxic connections. So listen, so first of all, okay, I met good old Tank when we was working at the Alicora. Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> which is actually a Lorica, honey, where it was all bed, bug, and fist at Jesus' hip. That's right. Are you still over there? I am not, actually. Well, praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. He gone on. <laughs> he ain't with the bugs no more. So listen, so um, yeah, so we're going to talk about breaking free from uh, toxic relationships today. And I know it's probably a little loud in the background, but we down to the cheddars. And y'all know that I like the cheddars, honey, that I stays here at the cheddars. Okay. And I tried to sit in the back, couldn't sit back there. So listen, so we're over here in the um, in the bar area and it's a little loud, but I think you guys will be able to hear us. And I'll try to turn some of the sound down in the back. I know this will be different for y'all. So yeah, so the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to go through a little series of questioning or whatever, but it's going to be more like a dialogue and a conversation because what I wanted to do was um, get a guy on the podcast because you know I'm the only one that's talking as of right now but you know I wanted to have you know a male's perspective on um, you know breaking free from toxic connections because men go through the same thing men have to break free from toxic relationships as well so so we got good brother Horace on here I didn't even say your real name. I said Tank. Well, he'll let you know. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Give me a brief introduction of who you are and where you're from. Absolutely. Um, again, as Ashley said, I'm Horace. I'm known as Tank as well. I'm uh, originally from Philadelphia. Um, born and raised 
And I uh, initially came down here in Huntsville, Alabama for school. So I've been out here for quite some time. And, um, you know, Ash and I are really, really great friends. And um, anytime we connected, it has always been on some uh, really intellectual, deep spiritual level, um, you know, conversing yes. about how, you know, how great God is in our life and um, how we need to continue to place him first above and ahead of everything we think, say, and do. And um, it's just been a really, really great walk so far, um, you know, with this friendship and um, being out here as well, Huntsville, Alabama, currently. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, if you could describe our friendship in one word, what would that one word be? Uh, if I did uh, describe it in one word, I would definitely say energy. Absolutely, um, you know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, honey, because we bees off the chain. Honey. I'm telling you, see, listen, see, you got to have some friends in your life that got some good sense. You know, you have those friends that you cut up with, and me and Tank can cut up, you know what I'm saying? But you got to also have friends, you know, that can uh, spit that intellectual knowledge, you know, that'll keep you spiritually grounded, right. and, you know, that'll pull you back when you're trying to jump close to that edge. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Absolutely. So, um, the next thing uh, I want to know is what did home life look like for you? And, like, what was it like growing up on a day to day basis? with you did you grow up with both of your parents like how, how was it growing up with you yeah that's an awesome question and um, it's really funny that you actually even mentioned that Ashley because um you know earlier this week um, I was uh, sitting at my house and um, the Holy Spirit just came around me I had a real deep thought about something and, yes um, Holy Spirit I was really I, I really was sitting here thinking to myself like um God really really fortunately blessed me with a great mother and uh, my mom, you know, I grew up in a single parent home. Um, she had about uh, five children, um, the youngest out of all five. And, um, you know, I grew up where she, um, you know, invested a lot into me, where so uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, and um, just o overall holistically. And, um, you know, growing up within an environment that I was in in Philadelphia, you know, we come across a lot of violence and a lot of uh, right, right. situations coming to, going on on a day to day basis, especially in school. Um, you know, my classmates at a very young age, I um, had a bit of a rough time because, uh, you know, I, I really carried myself with a lot of confidence and my mother made sure that, you know, I always had clothes on my back, food on the table. So I always, you know, look really nice at the same time. And, yes, uh, as most you know, awesome mothers yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, you know, she definitely made sure I did that. And uh, the thing about it is I came across a lot of, like, my peers who were really kind of angry sometimes because they would see me have this, that, and a third on and, you know, new clothes and used to do this and do that. And um, I used to come across a lot of problems sometimes. And she always really, um, you know, explained to me, hey, look, you're not going to always come across people who are going to accept you. You're not right. always going to be accepted. You know, you're going to come across some people that may be jealous of you sometimes and may hate you. Right. Even in adulthood. Yeah, right. even as an adult, you know. And uh, I had to really think about that deeply. And I said to myself, you know what? Even though I had like nice things on, I'm going to wear the clothes, and I'm not going to let the clothes wear me. There like you she go. said, you there know, you and go. Um, you know, it's just really a lot of different things that she's invested in me. And anytime I used to have a trouble, a troublesome time at school or with peers, I used to come home and see her at the door, her smiling would just really like melt all of that away and I used to wow. just get happy again just some simply from her smile so she's another really energetic soul as well that uh you know I got a lot of my knowledge and wisdom from as well wow and that reminds me a lot of um of my boys because you know with children and even you know talking about the Holy Spirit and you know discernment and with children children know when you're not right That's you right. know and you know and as you guys know I have two boys Aiden and Austin ages four and eight and so my boys are, it's like when they're having the worst of the worst of day, you know, when they see me, it just, they just light up like a Christmas tree. Right. And it makes me feel so special, you know, when they light up like that. And I'm like, wow, because what I do realize is, you know, God has entrusted me, not just with my children, mm -hmm. but these these boys that I have, and it's a blessing to have boys because I'm raising somebody's husband. That's right. You know, this is going to be somebody's father one day. That's right. So I'm very careful with the way I handle them. You know, I don't, I've never told them, you know, get out of my face, you just like your dad and, you right. know, curse at them. I don't do that, you know, right. with my children at all because I understand the value of speaking life into your children. That's right. Because I want them to do the same thing with their children. You know, as you know, the Bible says that a, that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children children that's and right. I don't think that that's just monetarily I think that you know is the wisdom that you instill in them because right. you want that to be passed down from generation to, to generation, generation. Yeah. And, you know and even on the contrary you know when it comes to you know generations and generational curses right you know you could also receive that because you know you can have the sins of the forefathers so I don't right. want you know I don't want my children to have to experience anything you know that I have experienced of course you know you can't keep them from going through heartache and hurt oh, yeah. pain absolutely you know they're gonna experience some things but when it comes to um, things that I can avoid 
avoid, you know, keep my hands clean, <laughs> you know, and as many ways that I can, then I want to make sure, you know, I can do that uh, with my children. That's right. But yeah, so um, as we're talking about toxic connections and breaking free from toxic connections, because as you guys know, you know, I'm going through a divorce and all this other stuff. And so, you know, I always want to use this platform that God has given me, you know, to help minister to other people and help bring other women, and other men out as well. Right. So um, to you, Tank, what would you um, consider a toxic connection? Yes, uh, really, really great question. Um, one thing that I would certainly say is a uh, toxic connection okay. is um, a disconnection of you know God within the middle of the relationship. Now that's the gospel. Absolutely, you know, and um, you know, we have a lot of unequally yoked situations going on, and um, from the outward looking in, it looks awesome. You know, mm -hmm. it looks great. You know, and the thing about it is, the way the enemy works is he works off of illusion. I'm telling you. <laughs> so one way you'll think that um, you know something's going great and grand, and you know they they they're getting a lot of money, and you know the lifestyle they're living is just awesome and perfect but it's a lot of deep-rooted things going on behind the closed door so I say that to say this you know a lot of times when we are in like a lot of social networks and online and you know just looking at um, other people's relationships and comparing themselves to ourselves you know it causes us to get into a, a, a bit of a depression it does. And so yes and so the thing about it is what I say is I say just mainly uh, focus on God and you know allow yourself to reflect upon him you know so that you can be able to compare your lifestyle to where he wants you to go instead of you doing that to everyone else that is around you. absolutely absolutely because what will happen is you'll get into this whole comparison game you know yes. and you're like well dang you know he has such and such and she has such and such that's right you know then you know it should I, I should have that and you know I want my relationship to be like that too but the thing about it is you can never tell what a house is like by looking through the window you can't you ever can't. you know you don't know what that foundation is and I always tell people, you know, when you are, you know, looking to be in a, um, a long-term relationship, be it, you know, business, you know, friendship, you know, always consult God because the word says that you are to um, acknowledge God in all of your ways. And, you, and then if you mm -hmm. seek the kingdom first, you know, and, and his righteousness, then God will add everything to else you. along with that. Absolutely. So, you know, nobody wants to um, get into this whole mindset of, and social media has a, I'm telling you, social media can be it's, such poison. It is. It's very addictive yes you know, that's the one problem a lot of people can't really break off free from yes it. yes yeah, and yeah. i and i think it, it's healthy you know from time to time for people to withdraw because i have to withdraw you know even with you know my ministry page that i have sometimes i have to post and i have to you know unplug that's right because if not you know you have to really 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 be careful when it comes to you know helping other people oh yeah because you don't want to ever get in the place of god that's right Absolutely. ever because sometimes honey let me tell you something People will worry you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. They will worry you, and they will wear you all the way down. And I'm like, listen, baby. All I know is Jesus. Okay. That's right. So all I can do is point you to um, who brought me out. Yeah. But you know, you have to make sure you don't get into um, this whole mode of allowing people to idolize you. Because to be honest with you, to the ego, it's like pretty. That's right. It is because it's like okay, if, even if, if, especially if you've had rejection issues mm -hmm. and you've had people that has been around you that's not really want to have anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden you have, you know, these people that are like looking up to you and they're asking you these questions and, you know, you don't want to get in a place of where they idolize you and you place yourself in, in the place of God because that's a dangerous place to be in. So I always yeah. tell people, listen, you know, I don't have all of the answers, but what I can do is point you to, you know, who assisted me and who helped me. So, it sure so, does. um, so have you ever been in a toxic connection before, be it a friendship, relationship, um, Sometimes family members are toxic because I got some family members hunting that's like Jesus. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. And when it comes down even to family, just to piggyback off what you said just now, you know, sometimes you have family and then you, sometimes you have relatives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, at the same time, you know, you really want to know the difference between who is your family member oh, who is your relative. Yes, Lord. You have family members that even will try to pull you down. And, you know, if they see you rising up and they're not rising up themselves, they don't want to see you rise. Right, right. And that reminds me of the scripture where it said uh, with Jesus, he said that he went to his own and his own received him not. That's right. You know, so, you know, here it is. This is the Savior of the world. And they're like, oh, bro, that's that's Joseph's son. That's right. the that's the carpenter's son. Oh, he just do such and such. So a lot of 
of times, you know, your greatest support that's right. is going to be outside of oh, your yeah. family. Outside, yeah. Outside because outside your family, family yeah. they always see you as, well, that's just Ashley. That's yeah. little Ashley. I remember when she was such and such or, yeah. you know, I remember. And I promise you, like, my biggest support, and my family supports me. Right. But my biggest support, I'm talking about the encouragement and, you know, the, the uplifting and the Ashley, you know, this is awesome. It has come from people that I'm not really even tight with. And some that's people right. I've never even met. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of them yeah. I've never even met. So, so you've been in a toxic relationship, yeah, a connection before? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. To um, you know, to add, add into that, I have certainly been in um, very toxic relationships. Um, you know, I would say the one thing that causes that mainly is impatience. You know, yes, um, you know, Lord. mainly um, not waiting on God, and um, you know, just you know, allowing the enemy to take control of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know, because anytime I've noticed that happen, um, you know, it really threw me off the the, the realm. Um, you know, on the path that God wanted me to initially go upon with that individual. Right. You know, things may have been looking great, looking awesome in the very beginning, and once you know the, I would say, sexual fornication started happening, mm -hmm. and those you know, um, you know, uh, soul ties started being created. That's when things just started, you know, really becoming more shaky. So a lot of times you might think that's going to draw you closer to a person, but it's actually pulling you away from that person even farther. Right. You know, right. You're, you're, you're physically, you know, connected with this person, but spiritually you're totally disconnected and God is not within the mix of that. No. So, you know, the main thing about, um, you know, having that situation is any toxicity you deal with in a relationship of that nature, you have to just continue to ask God to give you the power over your flesh, you know, because the flesh is weak. You know, Child, so you have to certainly make sure. It is weak, honey. That's I'm right. telling you. you, you know, have to be intentional. You have to. You have to. You know, and it, it, everything needs to be placed in the beginning, in the forefront. Right. And, and people are so fearful of you know explaining and you not know, to being people accepted. what they are exactly. Right. You know, not fear of fear of rejection that they get caught up with. You know, the next thing you know, it was great, and now it's totally haywire. Right. Right. You know, so it's, it's a matter of confidence and just open and being open enough to ask God to give you the power to you know forefrontly act you know you know act as a person who God wants you to portray towards other people as well right so, right know, and, you know and honest. sometimes you know sometimes with the people that God places in our lives we were never even supposed to even get into a romantic relationship with them anyway yeah at yeah. all period yeah. but like you said you know getting to a point to where you're impatient you know That's when right. you're trying to play God when you're lonely that's right. Which is really a mess. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, when you're trying to make something happen, just you're going to make it happen. And yeah. you know from Jump Street that that's not what you're supposed to be doing. It's not. It's but not. you're like, you, and like with me, I can only speak for myself. Like with me, I would think, okay, well, okay, God, I know this is not like exactly who you have for me. Right. But I thought that I could actually pray them into the person that you I desired them to be, them to be yeah. right and who I thought. And even, you know, there's been times where I've seen more in them than what they've seen in themselves. But God was like, no ma'am. That's not you, your job. That ain't right. That's mm -hmm. not listen, that man is supposed to lead you spiritually. That's right. Okay. And so I was like, well, you know, he don't, you know, he may not have this and he may not and this is it's nothing against like men who are just coming into the faith and just trying to get to know who Christ is. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, if you know who you are spiritually, here it is, you know, I'm an intercessor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a prayer warrior and I get with somebody that don't pray. That's right. That don't make no sense it at all. It like none at all. It's gonna be a total tug of war. Right, right. And I know God was looking like, bro, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. no, this is not what you this is not the direction that you're supposed to go in. That's but right. we try to make things happen anyway. So, you know, I've gotten to a point now where I'm just like, you know what, Lord, in every relationship, because mm -hmm. you know, with this with this episode of breaking free from toxic relationships, it had to be done because I recently, you know, had to cut some people off. Yeah. And so it's been like hard it really yeah. has been because you can formulate soul ties you know with business partners oh, with yeah. friendships you know you don't necessarily have to um you know be sexually involved with somebody i don't believe to have a soul tie because you can make verbal agreements with them. oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah how yeah, people yeah. say you know i never leave you that's right that's you know we bffs forever right and then you have to mess around you have to recant you know exactly what you said because guys like listen no i never even told you look this right here was supposed to be for a season right and you're trying to make this thing for a complete lifetime and this is it was never even intended to be that way and, and sometimes you know we hang on and we be kicking and screaming and hollering and we don't want to move forward and we're like well, God why I got to be by myself but God always says he has something greater he's got something bigger okay. so speaking of something bigger when it comes to um, toxic 
uh, connections and relationships. Um, did you have signs? Did you see signs like before you got in it with them, or did you see the signs after you were involved with them that the, that the relationship was toxic? Yeah, well, you know, the thing about it is, I was just going to certainly say something about that because, you know, anytime that you are impatient, you know, the enemy has a way of uh, sending a lot of counterfeits in your direction. Oh, so you know, you, you'll, you'll think you're with someone who's going to really be with you for the rest of your life, Listen. but then at the end of the day, that person is the same person that's at the sent for strict by the enemy to truly to try to really tear you down and destroy your life so you know that's why it's really important to ask God to give you that spiritual discernment so that you can be able to know exactly mm -hmm. who is supposed to be around you or who's not and to be able to keep at that perfect distance between individuals and being patient enough to analyze them and, and you know wait and, and to wait it out so you know I say that um you know sometimes I've seen signs in the beginning and sometimes I've seen them later down the line mm -hmm. but I would say the most for the most part, I would definitely say that um, I seen signs and ignored them, mm -hmm. you know, um, all because I wanted to get out of the situation what I wanted to get out of. So it's also a matter of self selfishness, which caused me to, you know, to, to create a demise for my own self. Right. You know, my own selfish needs caused me to demise myself. So, you know, I definitely ask God to really work on that and to cleanse me from, you know, any matter of selfishness and, you know, and greed and, you know, trying to take control of, of, of whatever the enemy is trying to root in my life, especially when the fleshly matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that, that's the truth right there. And it's, Absolutely. you know, because, you know, the Bible says that we are drawn away by our own lusts. That's you right. Know, and our own desires. So, you know, nobody's going to ever be tempted. The enemy is not going to bring something before you that you don't like right he gonna bring the exact same thing that you like and the crazy part about it is if you really don't get to the root of a toxic connection right you know the next relationship you get in it'll be the same exact relationship it's like same lamp different shade that's right that's right it's, you know it's the same it's the same spirit same being but they just have a different name and a different body right and the thing about it is to add in what you're saying right there ash like uh anytime you come across a repetitious situation where mm -hmm. you come across the same people with the same type of characteristics over and over again at that point is when and I was just telling my friend this recently at that point is when you want to begin to self-reflect on yourself that's the truth because you may be actually carrying some toxicity in you that hasn't been resolved yet that's the so, truth so and the enemy want to keep you keep you blinded by that he doesn't want to see allow you to see yourself he doesn't of want to see that you're, you're struggling with certain areas he wants you to continue to be prideful to continuously waste your time your mm -hmm. precious time now that you can't get back that you cannot get back and for people to come into your life to really pull you down over and over and over again so you have to be willing and open enough to really self-reflect and be receptive to whatever the holy spirit is telling you whether it's through the word whether it's through people really wise people or whatever the case may be you definitely want to open up and be ready for whatever the lord is trying to tell you and that's the truth you know a lot of times what we struggle with and the things we go through is not even our fault it's sins of the forefathers yeah that's it's right. things that have been passed down that we're still so bad Right, right, and you're like, and that's why it's so important to have these deep conversations, you know, with your parents and with your right. grandparents, because it's like, hey, especially, especially, what well, period? Even after you have kids and before you you have kids, you should have these these conversations. It's like, hey, what did you struggle with? That's right. So you'll know what's in the bloodline, and you'll actually you won't be praying amiss. So you'll actually know how to actually you know Handle. come in and attack that thing from the root. That's you right. know, because the for instance, the fruit on the tree could be us you just being a hoe okay that's right. you just out here just you know you just slanging it like crap okay right. on these streets all right that's right so that could be the fruit of it but right. until you curse the actual root the actual root of it is a spirit of perversion that's right and it could be a spirit of perversion actually wrapped up in rejection abuse you know anything. right abuse yeah. anything it could be all of these different things wrapped up in one so yeah so you have to really you know be intentional yeah. you know about you know asking questions because you know being saved and, 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 and walking on this cross on this Christ wall it's a journey and you have to ask questions you have to ask the hard questions you can't just you know just be willy-nilly in things out here because you willy-nilly if you want to then you be looking crazy because the enemy will gain access over you that's right and he wants you to be blinded he wants you to be ignorant because right. you know the word says that, that my people perish from because the lack of knowledge, knowledge you know that's right because you, and it's not the fact that you know you can't get it right. in this day and age is no excuse and there's no reason for people to just not know baby you can google anything that's right you know you can ask dr google anything and so talking about that you know we kind of talked about the next thing um which is about um uh, social media and family and i was going to ask you do you think that your environment and your surroundings actually have um a lot to do with your decision making when it comes to toxic relationships oh it absolutely does you know that's an awesome question as well because you know you want to also really reflect to see make sure that you're you don't become a product of your environment you know and a lot of people are just totally molding themselves to 
who they're around on a daily basis, whether it's at right. the workplace, whether it's a school, whether it's just friends on the street, you know, and you have to, you know, ask God to give, to make you your own individual. You know what I mean? You have to mold yourself into who he wants you to be instead I'm of what everybody you, else thinks. And be they comfortable want you to be. with that thing too. And be comfortable, be comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't actually be uh, in a situation where, you know, you're just simply trying to please everybody and, and this, that, and the third. Even if even if we're in a relationship and um, you know, a lot of people compromise, you know, they right. have the commitment saying, you know, hey, I'm gonna wait until marriage, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm gonna go ahead and allow myself to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. But one thing I, I tell a lot of people is this, um, especially a lot of my, you know, home girls that I know, um, you know, when you're in a relationship, think of it like this. Um, when you're when, you, when you're you're slowly approaching towards Christmas, and you have presents, and mm -hmm. uh, Christmas is on the 25th of December. Let's say, for example, you have a lot of presents around a tree, so you're looking like, okay, well. I do want to kind of get these presents right now and I want to see what's inside of them. Mm -hmm. So if you open up the presents before, let's say on December 10th or the 15th, you know, when the 25th of December come around, it's not what's the, the point? Right. It's not, it's not the point. It's no point and it's no excitement. No, nope, You know, it's because not. you already know what you are already getting in that present. Mm -hmm. Marriage and, and premarital sex is the same way. When you, you do it before the time you get married, after you get married, it's, it's like, it's a little different. Right. You know it's what like, I mean? Okay, you already had it prematurely this. already. Right. So it's not, it's no sense of excitement. You know, right. at that point, and it's not under a holy matrimony, which will allow God to make sure it be more right. of that, much more magnified. Right, you know, and the so. cra and the crazy thing about that, you know, even with celibacy, and I'm gonna have you back too, so we can talk about, you know, celibacy. Because see, sometimes, you know, women, it's hard for us oh, to yeah. even see Absolutely. any man to say, okay, I'm gonna dedicate everything to Christ. Okay. Because a lot a lot of times what you know what most men will do, they'll say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna give my life to Christ, but you know, you can't have my body parts. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they, they don't want to die to themselves. Yeah. And so, you know, I tell people a lot of times when it comes to celibacy, you know, the only way you can maintain your celibacy is for you to be intentional about it. Oh, and yeah. you get you gotta be wise. You can't put yourself in stupid situations. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I absolutely. tell folks yeah. all the time, people laugh at me, honey, you can't come to my house. Yeah. Oh That's no. Right. You, you can come to see me. Boundaries. You yeah. cannot come see me, hun. And it's not the it's not that. Oh well, you know I don't want somebody to come over because I'm scared of what they're gonna do. No, right. baby, I know what's in my blood. Like, I already okay? know what's going. On. Yeah, I know what's going to go okay. down. Yeah, you have to know yourself. Listen yeah. to that own up. self. Be true, honey. You Absolutely. can't come over here smelling good with teeth and things, <laughs> honey. You know what I'm saying? And arms or whatnot or whatever. <laughs> no, you can't come over here, baby. That's no. Right. So when they say, well, I want to come visit you, come to your house. come to my house. Where we go? No, baby. Well, we yeah. can go is to church together. Let's go to church on a together. Sunday. Right. We can go on a group group day date oh yeah is what we can do because see i've been in that situation before and i've said well i'm going to be celibate i'm going to wait you know into marriage you know and, and in the past you know the longest that i had I've, I've gone i was celibate for like two and a half years that's right and i was fine because i didn't put myself in compromising situations right but the very moment that i decided to stay the night with somebody mm. knew i shouldn't even been doing that stay the night with you and then boom i'm upset because it's all gone things going down mm -hmm. for five minutes yeah. You know what I'm saying? Two years gone for five minutes, you know, and I was pissed, honey, okay? Yeah, yeah. So listen, so the thing about it is we have to be intentional about what God is calling us to, you know, and about what, um, you know, the connections that, that we're having when it comes to uh, the individuals around us. That's so right. what is your biblical view um, on toxic connections? And we pretty much kind of talked about it a little bit, but, you know, what's your biblical view on that? Absolutely. You know, like you mentioned earlier, um, you know, one of my favorite verses is Matthew 6 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his yes. righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so you know I say that when um, you know you place God first you know he will continue to give you the discernment you know how to you really really try to stop yourself from becoming in a snare right so you know the enemy like i said you know he wants to set many traps for because he set them up to him every day every day you know? every, every day. day so you know and then as long as we stay focused on what we need to stay focused on a daily basis you know he will give us the power to overcome it because you know that's that life is, is a trap you know if you if you allow it to be you yes. know so you have to really be you know focused especially you know from that situation i'm telling you let me tell you something honey traps child they be like the rat traps and they is just all over the place and you know and it was um, a scripture that I read I can't remember where it was and I have to find it and put it in the notes but it was saying how the enemy follows you around and he sets up traps oh yeah because think about it, he he's studied you. That's right. And he knows you. And he know he don't know he, he's not omnipresent, no. He doesn't know everything. 
But at the same time, the enemy knows your calling on your life and he knows your destiny. And so what he wants to do is allow you, he don't want to kill it. He's going to make you do it. Right. And he wants your witness to be damaged, you know, and, and you know, your text messages screenshotted and your inbox screenshot. And then, you know, when it comes time for you to really minister to people and try to bring the broken and, and the hurting individuals in, you can't do it. That's right. You ain't able to do it because people don't, no one wants to hear you. And so I always tell, you know, tell the people, you know, here on the podcast that, you know, I'm going to keep a nonfiction with them. Right. And I'm always one to, you know, really just be transparent about what I'm going through. Even with my, my walk and my uh, and my, my journey of, of healing, right. you know, I, I try to be as transparent as possible because you cannot win people for Christ and you can't be a correct representation That's of right. Christ if you run your land. No, you can't. And, and I definitely want to add into that what you're saying right there to um, Proverbs as well, where it says iron sharpens iron. Yes. So one person sharpens another another so if you know you're in a situation where you're consistently the only one really sharpening this person up you're adding input you're letting this person get a great advice you know you just great wisdom and knowledge you're dropping into this person and that person is not reciprocating that then you at that at that point you're really just casting your pearls among swine that's all you're really doing so that right there is another signified sign to let you know hey look this person is really might this might be a really toxic relationship for right. the situation that I'm in right. so biblically I would definitely say that you know pay attention to who may not drop jewels back into you that you put out to that one and that is so good that's so good that you said that because you know that's what happened pretty much you know in my my last marriage because you know I would pour out and I would mm. pour out and I would pour out it's a drink. and I was it's I'm telling it's a drink. you it like it wears you out and you end up pouring from an empty cup that's and right. when you pour from an empty cup you have because you got to keep something in there for yourself you have I have to keep something in for my children and for those that God has called me to Absolutely. but it's so if I'm constantly pouring out pouring, to you pouring, pouring out pouring. Pouring, pouring 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 and I'm getting nothing back yeah. and I'm like hey you know I need encouragement today mm. and I don't hear nothing you just like, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And so, you know, God gives us signs. And, and you know, he dropped those nuggets along the way. Like, hey, girl, listen. Mm -mm, get out of there. I didn't call you over here. You did that on your own. That's right. You did that on your own. And uh, the crazy part about doing things on our own and not inviting God in, you know, it causes us, you know, if we're not careful to really be closed off and to be bitter and to be frustrated and then it makes your healing process even longer you yes. know so you gotta have some common sense so you do you gotta have some common sense because if you don't have some common sense mm. honey the enemy will just he will just wear you all the way out and that. speaking of common sense that kind of segues into um do you think it's important to have um self-worth and to really care about um love yourself first really like really love yourself like to the uttermost before you actually embark upon even asking god to bring somebody into your life absolutely you know and the thing about it is especially in this day and age and the generation we're dealing with we have a lot of people who gains their self-worth through other individuals right you know they don't they don't see any any difference where where it comes down to themselves versus someone else so they're looking for another person to, to gain a relationship with to earn the validity that they're lacking inside of them own selves but you can't actually gain that power from another person you, you have to cannot. gain it through God and yourself so the Lord will give you the power to have that self-worth so that you have enough to appreciate it when someone else comes around in, your, in, your, in the picture. And that's the truth because yeah. you can't put that much responsibility on another individual, another whether it's no. a friendship, whether it's whatever, because it, it, that's pretty much like you said, they're going to be taking this, the place of God. They, right. No one can give you that peace. No. Nobody can, I don't care how good they are, I don't care how fine they are, honey, I don't care what they got, I don't mm. care how much money they got, what they drive, nobody, nobody, is nowhere in the world where I don't read it where it said that a physical man gives you peace that surpasses understanding. Right. The only one that can give you peace, like inner peace, because you have to have that inner peace first. So if I'm in turmoil, I'm not healed, I'm, I'm hopping from relationship to relationship to relationship right. because I'm lonely and I don't want to be by myself and I don't want to hear God. Because a lot of times, you know, God causes us to be by ourselves so we can actually hear him. And he's trying to prune us and he's trying to pull things off of us. But we're so busy, you know, with wanting to just have a body around. You got to right. get comfortable with being by yourself. Yes. So if you're not comfortable with just being with you, yeah. how in the world? Can you be comfortable with, with being with else. an individual? Absolutely. You can't. Absolutely. You know, somewhere I heard a very wise person once said that, you know, happiness is pretty much temporary. You get happiness, you know, from exciting situations. That's the truth. Joy is everlasting. 
everlasting. Oh, yeah. So when you gain that joy through God and he's provided that within you, nobody can steal that. Nobody. You know, and the Lord wants to gain, allow you to gain that by having a relationship with him. Right. As you mentioned earlier, you know, marrying Jesus, mm -hmm. allowing him to be your husband first. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to provide that joy to you. So no matter what man does to you, because the word says, you know, put your trust in no man. Whatever anyone does to you, you, that joy is consistently going to reside within the core of yourself. I'm telling you, it's going to consistently reside because yeah. it's been, you know, situations and, you know, I've talked about, you know, in the previous episode on the podcast, how, you know, I was, everybody around me was like in turmoil when people were, you know, losing their jobs and, you know, even like after my marriage ended and I was like severely depressed and the Lord was just mm. like, listen, I promise you, it's like something just broke off me just one day mm -hmm. and I got up and I just had so much joy. Right. Like it was not happy. Happiness, no, but it was like joy that I had, and I That's knew right. that the only person that gave me that joy was God, and I started to just really embrace myself. You know That's what I'm right. saying? I started to just love me for just me, flaws and all, honey. The little piece of flab I got around oh, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She started to just love on herself, That's and so right. what I did, you know, I took this time because, you, as you guys know, the whole summer my boys have been gone, right. and so I wanted to take the time, you know, to really just get to know me mm -hmm. because I've always just like been somebody's girlfriend okay. somebody's fiance somebody's wife you That's know right. and so it's never just been like a really you know intentional time of wanting to get to know you know who I am who are, and yeah. so that's what I wanted to do you know therapy has been a tremendous blessing I don't know why black folks don't want to go therapy yeah 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 I feel like it's the thing where we don't want to be labeled but you know the the, the the others of the other color they right. don't mind being baby labeled. they don't mind you know, they, they, they're, they're but my thing that. is I'm like listen you know therapy and kept me from you know busting a couple of heads oh, to yeah. the white meat oh, yeah. okay oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it oh, has yeah. kept me from you know endangering myself That's okay right. because you have to get it's awesome to have a biblical perspective absolutely please have a biblical perspective oh, yeah. but at the same time you have to have practical steps and that's that's also segues into the you know the next question which is uh, what advice or steps can you share like from a male's point of view um, to release toxic connections because I know some people they have a really like hard time like getting those steps together because some people are like well you know how can I leave this is all that I have you know um, this is all I've ever known how can I do this how how can I do that? Uh, what advice do you have for men and for women, mm -hmm. you know, that can help them pull free from um, from those relationships and not make the same mistake again? That's right. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, like we were just saying um, a minute ago, sometimes, you know, it's, it's really difficult really to break free. And, and some of those things are strongholds and bondages that we ourselves create with certain people. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I can really advise is, that, you know, not just prayer, but sometimes some things take prayer and fasting. That's the truth. You know, and um, it, yeah, it doesn't necessarily said these kinds yeah, these kind, kind, these will kind, kind will not come out unless you pray and fast there you go but there folks don't want that's discipline kind of though that's yeah. discipline they it take discipline is. and it people don't is. want to turn their plate down they don't they don't they, they want to fast social media social yeah. media no no baby you need a real fast, a real fast. Like, you know, sometimes, real sometimes it takes social media sometimes yes. it can take food sometimes it can take anything any whatever you think that you need to rely upon on a daily basis sometimes there you, you go need to fast upon that mm -hmm. and let god know hey look i'm serious I'm serious about what I'm trying to reach to you on, and I need expedited result. Lord, That's the allow, truth. allow you allow the door to be open for me. I'm knocking on it. So you buy just think about it like this: when you're fasting, you just think of, of you knocking on God's door at that point, mm -hmm. and He's going to open up. Right. You know, so you have to really, really be uh, relying on Him, and then um, you know, just being being confident in whatever your, your decision you're making. You know, you don't want to continuously go back and forth, back and forth, because um, sometimes a person might come back into your life just to see if you you actually mature. Right. Right. From that last and time the crazy thing with. about it, they'll come back and yeah. then, because the word says that when, the, when those demons have been cast out, they oh, yeah. come back even stronger, even stronger and they bring even time. more with that's them. That's right, and that's right. all they're doing. Right, right, right. right. So you know, think about it like this: you ever been in church where you know you're praying or you're about to walk into the altar call, and you know the next thing you know, you're getting phone calls from you know so and so from Text three months ago, from and years everything. ago. Yes. I'm not talking about people you've never even heard you're like, years, what? maybe. Yeah, yeah. In in the the world. World. Right. All of those are soul ties that have never been. Right. So, right. you know, a great advice that I can leave to my, the listeners is that definitely you want to always make sure you guys got to cut those soul ties and fast and pray and it will absolutely work. I just guarantee and I've seen it done. Absolutely. Trust me, absolutely. It really works. It does. It works. And even, you know, the and I even like to think on the mindset of fasting, because if you're going to fast and you're going to be like, oh, my God, I can't eat these donuts. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just just eat. 
Yeah. Just go and go yeah. eat then, yeah. baby, because yeah. your fasting is in vain, okay? Yeah. You know, it's it's a heart posture that you have when you're fasting. And it's like it's like, you know, the word says that that the um that the Lord would not despise a broken and a contrite spirit. That's right. So you have no. to be broken in spirit. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you can't you can't come to God haughty, you mm -hmm. know, and arrogant like, well, you know, I, I'm gonna go on and do this because they said that it's gonna work and I need to get this up. No, baby, you got to really be broken, honey. And when you are broken, I'm telling you, I've seen it happen so many times in my life right. where I have just been broken. I, I promise you, listen, I've been to, I have gone to God like so many times on different, you know, subjects and, and wanted him to free me from certain stuff. But my heart wasn't broken. Right. I wasn't broken. Like my, I had to actually get to a point where I knew that I had no power to save myself. That's right. Because sometimes we're like, oh, well, I can do it on my own. You know, if I do yeah. this or if I do that, you know, like, no, you cannot, you have to understand once you get to the point where you're like, I cannot solely rely upon anybody else but God. Nobody can bring me out of this but God. Then that's when things will start to move in your life. That's right. Yeah. And we, I believe we as humans, we are just have we have this, such a thing where we are so used to being in control of everything. I'm talking about and, everything. And control is a matter of witchcraft. Oh, yeah. That's, so, what, it, know, that's word, what the word, word says. says. So, yes, it know, does. So if, you, if you're always in a matter, uh, you know, matter of, of trying to control and take advantage. And, and manipulate. And, and, you know, and that's the spirit of Jezebel. That's exactly a Jezebel spirit. Is. Right. So the Lord is not going to bless that. So you no. have to ask God, like, Lord, allow me to lose control so I can find you. Mm -hmm. And then he'll allow you to he allow you to gain control within him. I'm telling you. And when you start praying those prayers, you know, God, kill my flesh, kill my flesh, kill my flesh. Please believe when you start praying that, I'm talking about everything will come out of woodworks. Yeah. Okay. Everything yes, will come sir. out of woodwork. Okay, yeah. guys, speak to me. You know, I want to do what you call me to do. You know, speak to me in dreams and visions. Let me tell you yeah. something. Like the last past couple of weeks, it has been crazy. I ain't been able to sleep. Last past, mm, I would say probably like six or seven days because at, pretty much after I confirmed with you that we were going to do this podcast right. on breaking free from toxic connections when I tell you my warfare has <laughs> gone through the freaking roof I do bet. you hear me I, bet. I have I was like what in the world is going on but I, I knew I said you know what Lord this is just showing me because see number one hell is pissed oh yeah and hell is upset because oh, yeah. anytime is two because the word says when there are two or three that I'm in the midst oh, yeah. and so you know when you have two believers that come together for an awesome cause, you know, and trying to really, you know, help uh, bring people out of darkness and bombard hell, then the enemy is pissed. That's and I'm right. telling you, listen, I know this podcast, this very episode is going to bless so many people oh, yeah. because it has like literally like no lie. My warfare <laughs> yeah. has been stupid crazy. It's been so much turmoil around me, so much strife. You know, the enemy has tried to really just upset my um, my thought process and try to like rustle my spirit to try to get a reaction out of me oh, yeah. and I'm just like you know what Lord mm -mm, no I'm not doing this right here is for a greater cause oh, yeah. this is for a greater cause absolutely it is yeah, it's it, will be. it will be and the thing about it is like uh, you have a lot of people right now that are struggling with you know a loss of job no money family member just passed away they they're diagnosed with all type of you know sicknesses the thing about it is sometimes these things happen to our lives so God can gain the attention that he's been right. it, screaming for this so all he this can time get the glory these, so he can get the glory at the end of the day so sometimes we have to lose control and not allow whatever whatever's around us to right. anger us because whatever angers you controls you now that's the truth and she don't like whatever to be controlled you controls you there okay you go. ain't nobody yeah, finna yeah, handle yeah. no strings on me <laughs> there you okay go. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. don't like to be controlled yeah. so you know you you're right you have to get to a point where you just have to you have to relinquish control yeah. and I know that area so well because that has been that was something that I so struggled with oh, yeah. because I wanted to know everything that's right okay I wanted to know when this was gonna happen when that was gonna happen now Lord is like wait a minute baby you're not me that's right no 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 you're not me no what you're supposed to do is trust me and it's crazy because when we say God help me trust you help me trust you Lord help me trust you what he normally does is put you in tight situations that that make you uncomfortable that's gonna birth you out oh yeah Absolutely. Every single time. Absolutely. You know, when you say, God, help me trust you, it ain't going to be just no bubbles and sunshine going to fall through the sky. No. Okay. And until you figure out how to trust God, you're going to see them same mountains like over and over. You're going to keep repeating the same thing until you respond the right way. That's right. You got to respond the right way. So it was times in my life, you know, where I was like, well, you know, something will happen. I'll lose a job. Um, somebody will walk away and I would just fall to pieces. And I wonder why I just kept seeing the same thing over and over and over again. And he's like, look, bro, look. 
listen you gonna keep seeing this mountain until you pass the test so finally when it actually came to me again i was just you know what god this is out of my control i give it to you i got i trust you. i started to just really just extol and just edify christ and i'm like you know what god i trust you i know that you know the beginning before the end i know you have a future hope and an expected end for my life no matter what it looks like you have to pray god's word back to him because god's word never ever never ever fails, fails. it right. never fails people will fail you you know jobs will fail you Child, sometimes your heels will fail you because mine fail me and I fell in the street, child. So listen, <laughs> you have right. to put your whole hope and your whole trust, you know, in a true and a living God. And if that's hard for you to do, you know, you just have to get to a point where you can say, God, help me. You got to be transparent because he knows anyway. That's right. So why not just be honest and just tell the truth? Lord, this is hard for me to do. I want to trust you. But every person in my life, see, this, this, this is what it was with me. God took me to the scripture where it said that um, that God is not a man, not a man that he should lie. You know, people always read that scripture. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent, right? right. But he said, no, no, no. You're having trust issues because I need you to break this thing all the way down. Read the first part again. And it said, God is not a man. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not a man. That's right. He said, it's hard for you to trust me because you're looking at me That's like all man. of the men in your life mm -hmm. that has hurt you, that has, you know, broken you, that have not, you know, held up their end of the bargain. But, you know, he just told me, he said, listen, allow me to be your husband. That's right. First. Absolutely. Okay. Before I send anyone into your life, That's allow right. me to be it. And yeah. so you have to get to a point to where you just comfortable and you just, like, you got to run to God first before yeah. you run to anybody else. Oh yeah, because he wants to fine tune you. Oh yeah. He wants to totally fine tune you. He wants to make sure that you are totally appreciated because he can go ahead and send somebody that's made for you right now in your life. Listen. But if you're not ready for that person, guess what's going to happen? You're going to jack that it up. That person isn't going to last until your life. Nope, you and, you, and you're going to jack go. it all the way up there because you, you haven't been prone, you haven't been refined. You know, and the word says, you know, you go through that 500 and fight is for purification. It's that's not right. to burn you up. And sometimes, child, I know we feel like we're just going to be sick. Oh yeah. It's going to be like the Bible says, chaff in the wind, honey. Cause I was just like, Lord, ain't just nothing left for me no more. I said I'm just burnt all the way up, and he like, no, 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 I'm refining you. I'm That's refining right. you. So yeah, so we do. We got to get to a point to where we trust God with breaking um, those soul ties and those connections. And I know it's hard, y'all. Oh yeah. I know it's hard. Listen, you're talking to two people, listening yeah. to two people, you know, that has gone through Struggle. it, has walked through it, still walking through it. Yes. I know it's not easy, but it's not impossible. That's so right. if you want to go to new dimensions in your life, you know, you want to move on and do uh, new levels. I know people say new levels bring new devils, but child, mm -hmm. it is what it is because the enemy ain't got no power over you. No, no way. He has no power over you. So what, what last thing can you share? Um, you know, with the listeners and uh, before you close this out in prayer, what last thing can you share with them? Oh yeah, I, I definitely want to make sure that, um, you know, every single one of the listeners, if you're here right now, listening in on this, to just really, you know, stay confident and, um, you know, remove the sense of fear. Ask God to, uh, you know, remove that sense of fear so that you can be really focused and really strong in whatever decision you're making in your life. Whatever you're doing and by you placing God first, it will work. Trust yes, me, it will. nothing in this life will come easy. So everything, you know, that you're dealing with right now might be difficult, but at the end, it will be worth it. So press forward. Do not give up and stay strong. And God will work out whatever you're working on yes, right now. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And y'all know we always close this thing out in prayer. You know, we laughs and we we giggles and we has us a good time, honey, on the, on the podcast, child. We do. We has us a good time. Oh, yeah. So I just want to give y'all a treat, you know, this week, you know, with the Reverend Brother Dr. Tank. Thank you, you know thank what I'm saying? You. And we had us a nice little uh, combo here. So he'll be back. Don't worry, ladies. He will be back. Oh, yeah. So um, women, y'all hang on. Y'all hold out, you know, because there are some men that are out here that really have a heart for righteousness and they have a heart for God. Everybody not here thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All of them ain't thought. Okay. So you just got to make sure your heart is postured right and you get in the right position and you lose yourself in Christ. And when you lose yourself in Christ, then God to send, you know, those people into your life that's supposed to be there. So, so he's going to close us out in prayer and um, I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Absolutely. So, uh, dearly gracious Father, Lord upon high, we want to thank you for this day. Lord God, I ask you to continue to be with us, Lord Father, and every single one of the listeners on this podcast. Yes, God. God, we want to thank you so much for Ashley for allowing me to be here today, Lord Father, and we um, continue to invite your Holy Spirit within our hearts, minds, souls, and bodies. Yes, Lord, Lord. Jesus, whatever our listeners are dealing with right now, God, and even myself and Ashley, Lord Father, I ask you to break those strongholds and those bondages and soul ties right now yes, in the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus Christ, whether it's soul ties we created through sexual bondages, you know, soul ties of music, TV shows, or anyone else that we're around, God, whatever it is 
created for our demise. God, we ask you to break those spirits off right now in Jesus' name and allow us to continue to press forward, Lord Father, and allow us to be able to see each other, Lord God, as yes, you Lord. see us, Lord Father, yes, Lord. and not through our, our physical eyes, Lord Jesus, but through our spiritual eyes, Lord Jesus, and ask you to continue to allow us to be able to be confident and see exactly what you have set up for us because behind every temptation, Lord, is the blessing, Lord yes, Father, it is. and sometimes yes, it we come through the temptation to see if we're strong enough for that blessing, so God, allow us to be able to refrain from falling by the wayside yes, to, to by asking and giving your strength, Lord Father, that you're going to bestow amongst us. So we praise you and thank you and honor you, God, for everything you've done and everything you shall do. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus Christ, we all do pray. Amen. 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 I told y'all I had a treat for y'all, didn't it? Child, we is out here in the Cheddar's Honey repping the JC, baby, okay? Oh, the yeah. Jesus Christ, okay? See, look, we actually over here sitting in the bar area, too. Why the liquor being pulled, honey? Mm. We is over here tapping into the Holy Spirit. Right. Yes, we are. So, y'all know I love y'all tremendously, and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye. Amen. Thank you guys so much for listening and for all of your love and support is greatly appreciated. Please remember to rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to discuss, slide in your girl's DM on Instagram. All of my social media platforms are Broken Women Win. That is Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also follow my blog on my website, which is brokenwomenwin.com. Until next time, be breezy. Thank you.